So when they come, greetings from the beautiful Chiang Mai, Thailand. <laughs> Yay! We are with one of my original friends in Chiang Mai. We met two years ago, Stephen. Yay! What's happening? What's happening, man? Good to be Yay! here with you. From the Bay. Yeah, man. Good mm. to have you on. Uh, this was a long time coming, but this is appropriate that we're doing this now because uh, Stephen is now, uh, I'm calling him Young Buddha now because he actually just got back mm. from a two month uh, excursion in Nepal. So I wanted to bring him on because I actually started my little Buddha, Buddhist journey my second year in college and I've always called myself a Buddhist kind of ever since then just the Buddhist philosophy and and I was just curious to learn more about his trip personally so I wanted to bring him on and say hey why not just tell me about it in a podcast um so yeah first of all like I always do tell everyone like where you're from your background how did you get out to Chiang Mai in the first place mm -hmm. we met at the conference uh, two years ago and then yeah a little bit about like what you do online and how you came to the M nepal thing yeah awesome um I'll keep it pretty brief uh, i was born and raised in san francisco my parents are from china and um pretty much uh lived 20 minutes outside of san francisco and growing up in the suburbs it was um you know just a typical american lifestyle and uh my parents, the media, friends, family, all around. Um, there's there's kind of a a way of living that they expect everybody to to go through. Um, say so, it's basically just like you get good grades, then you go to college, then you get a good job, then you raise a family. System. There's kind of like a, a set timeline on all of these, and now it's it's changing a bit because culture itself is changing quite rapidly um, but eventually um, I went to college and for myself I just didn't feel like um, it was for me uh, I didn't feel like the things that we're learning were going to be applicable for what I actually wanted to do in life and at that time I didn't even know but at the same time it was like I don't feel like this is the direction I want to go and um, at the same time, I was I was uh, also selling some things on eBay, so I was making some money on the side in college already. So I was like, you know, you don't really. In my mind, it it already instilled something saying like, you don't really need to get a degree to learn how to make money or yeah, to right? to make money you're itself. Money. Um, I just uh, yeah, so I decided to just make a shift to make a change in life and um, that's when I started to travel and venture off and um, uh, my first trip was to uh, Peru to the Amazon jungles maybe we'll get into that later um, but after that I lived up in mount mountains in China and uh, eventually you know I was living off of savings so I started running out of money I, I looked online and saw that there was a big group of digital nomads making money online. So mm. I decided to come out to Chiang Mai and, and uh, you know, just make some money so that I can continue my okay, journey. Okay, so when you found out about Chiang Mai, you were in China? I was in China, yeah. Oh, what, you were living up in the mountains in there too? Yeah. Oh, so you've done this thing before. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's, yeah, he's it's, way it's more been, advanced than I thought. It's been uh, quite a journey. What did you, what was that like briefly? Like, what was it like? Um, you know, I, I grew up watching like those Chinese Kung Fu films, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was, um, felt like one of those. One of those, and it was, it, it was not just, it was a mix of martial arts and spirituality combined together. Sweet. And the place that I went to is pretty well known in China. Um, if, if you've seen Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, the main character is from that mountain. Oh. And supposedly the, the tale is the birthplace of Tai Chi is from that area. 
just basically picture the most beautiful place in China, and yeah, that's where you were. Yeah, right. so it was, it was a great experience. Um, went there and basically it was, well, I, I didn't really know uh, where in China I was going to be when I first got there, but mm -hmm. it was just three months of exploration, and I was basically looking for a teacher that can that can teach me, uh, you know, the light. Teach me. Yes. Show you the light. Exactly. I get you. Teach me the ways. Um, teach the young Buddha. Like, <laughs> mm. that would be sick if you like learned kung fu and you're like up there, like like at a Kill Bill or something. You're just getting yeah, trained. Yeah. Like, just ah! <laughs> uh, come out a kung fu master with yeah. the fucking samurai sword. Um, so. so to understand why he started vagabonding, if you don't know what that is, it's because he read vagabonding. Mm. So, um, like, tell people, like, what that book is, kind of, and, mm. like, how it influenced you and what it's all about. So. Mm. And, like, how you found it. Mm. So, back in college, I was, um, I think one of the past times was just going to the bookstore and just exploring different types of books. And um, one of the ones that I ran into was Four Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss. And... <laughs> a bow to the, to the mighty Tim Ferriss. Um, <laughs> and at that time, it was just very mind expanding um, because he was talking about the new rich and the old rich and different ways of making money. And he was showing, or in there, it was, it was saying that he was making X amount of dollars per month while living abroad not really working and I was like is is this guy for real but yeah, I, I, I questioned but at the same time you know I, I wanted to explore more um, and and it actually did make quite a bit of sense to me because I was doing the eBay business at that same at the same time and I mean even then uh, there wasn't that much work to do it was basically create the listings put it up once it sells I just mailed it out yeah and you know, it, it was still n not that much time required to do that. And so, um, you know, I, I believe that it worked. And from there, he talked about a book called Vagabonding. And this is basically just about uh, long-term travel, um, living abroad and, and just exploring and how, how it can expand your consciousness and, and the way that you view life starts to change because you start to see that the the culture in the area that you live in that's not all there is to life there's so many different ways to live and when you start to explore more and more and and see more and more then you start to open up to more and more possibilities so absolutely and the the thing that i kind of uh, see is you had that exploratory gene from the get-go because you were just exploring in the library you know one of those people mm. that just like they they need to explore mm. and I, I feel like that's a lot of us and like that's me too like I wanted to be an astronaut and an archaeologist mm. like as a little kid like I always pictured myself like Indiana Jones like in Egypt like digging up some stuff exploring some temples or that's some cool. pyramids so mm. cool that we're like both vagabonding, like mm. now expressing that gene or that desire. Mm. Um, I mean, ultimately, all this exploration is really just exploring yourself. When it comes down to it, every place I go, it's like I'm seeing new things, but at the same time, it's unlocking and unraveling parts of me that I didn't know and I wasn't aware that was there before. But now from these experiences, it's like things are starting to open right and that's yeah. a perfect uh segue into the M nepal thing mm. so how did you uh decide on nepal like i know you told <laughs> me that that's where buddha is supposedly from yeah. um like one of the most beautiful places in the world if you guys know don't know where what mm. nepal is it's the himalayas it's um between like china and india right mm. and um 
yeah, what was that like? Like, right, like, I met him the, or we were at this dinner the day he came back, and I was just like, dude, like, are you enlightened now? Like, what yeah. did you see? Like, how deep did you get in meditation? So I'm curious about all that stuff. Like, were you, did you have, like, a meditation, like, teacher? Mm. And, like, what was your living situation? And, like, what did you do? Enlighten us. Uh, that was quite a bit of questions, but I, I just, I <laughs> just, just let go. it flow. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, this this journey was actually quite spontaneous because uh, before that, I I had um, I wasn't sure where I wasn't sure where I needed to be, and uh, I was I remember I was on Copenhagen in one of the uh, Thai islands, and there was one day I was I was just a bit confused because it just didn't feel that I was supposed to be there at that moment um, I needed to to kind of uh, and again this all of this is we'll, we'll get to that point later but anyways there was one night I was walking on the beach I was all by myself and I look up looking at the stars just exploring and then I see um, a cluster of stars that look like an arrow and I was like wow that, that's fascinating I, w I wonder where that goes no right. way <laughs> and, you to Nepal. <laughs> well I, at the time at the time I, I, I had um, two choices in mind uh -huh. one was Rishikesh in India and the other one uh, was Bali mm -hmm. and uh, I was like, okay, I'm either going to go here or there. And at the time, there was, I, I was still working through some some impulses. Mm -hmm. And for me, I I wanted to go to Bali because for me, Bali seems more fun. It seems like. There, you know, in Ubu, there's a bunch of yoga people just running around, kind of just exploring, having fun. Mm -hmm. But I knew that I wouldn't be able to go as deep as I wanted at that time there. Right. Because um, it just would have been more stimulus. Yeah, for sure. Le way less distractions. Exactly. Yeah. While Rishikesh, I was kind of just like... I, I want to go, but there was resistance to going there because I felt like that was just straight diving deep within. Um, and so I looked up, I saw that arrow, and then I was like, okay, let's pull out my phone, got the Google Maps, and then there's that arrow on there. So I started pointing <laughs> no towards, that, towards that, uh, that arrow. And then I, I'm starting to expand the map to see, like, okay, where is this going? And I, as I expand, I see it going towards uh, Rishikesh. And as I found that out, because I didn't want to go, I was like, fuck, 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 <laughs> fuck. I was like, I was, I was kind of like, ah, why? Um, <laughs> so, so I was just like, in my mind, there, there's still this uh, constriction where I was like, ah. You know, I guess I'm supposed to go there. Um, Skirt. So, Inaudible. after a little while, um, things started to flow, and mm -hmm. life was happening. And eventually, one day, I met up with uh, one of my buddies, and uh, we took a substance that took us on a little journey. Um... It's the same one. Was that DMT? No, no, no. It's, okay. It was uh, something else. So basically, okay. we took that substance, and my start, my heart just started to open up, and I can just feel just love just radiating through me, uh, within me, out, boom, boom, boom. And that specific day, I decided to just message a bunch of people. So I messaged my family, I messaged friends. Um, and uh, one day, not one day, but uh, one of the girls I messaged, she replied to me and she was like, oh, where are you? What are you up to? And I was like, oh, I'm in, 
Yeah, I was in Chiang Mai at that time. I, I went from Copenhagen, flew down, and um, basically she was like, where are you? I was like, I'm in Chiang Mai. And she's like, ah, come to Pokhara. And I was like, well, what's it like in Pokhara? So she started to explain what it was like there. And, and for me at that moment, it started to click. Is that in Nepal? It's, it's in Nepal. Oh, so, so it started to click. It started to like everything just like mm -hmm. that she was saying was like things that I was saying to myself before where I was like, I'm looking for this place. Mm. And she described it and I was like, this is where I need to go. And in terms of, of the arrow, I don't think it was pointing towards Rishikesh because Rishikesh is actually really close to Nepal. So I think if that sign, maybe, maybe this is all made up as well, I don't know. Yeah. But in my mind, it was like, where is this? Anyways. You just got to take the flow. Look for exactly. any sign that you can. Exactly. And yeah, take the flow. Yeah. And um, for about three two three months I was kind of confused and not and hesitating about going to different places but when she explained it, that to me I pretty much booked the plane ticket that night Whoa, and please. I was on on the way and um, yeah I think at uh, at that time I was supposed to be in Nepal um, and uh, you know, life, <laughs> life is a very fascinating journey, you know? Oh, yeah. And, and you, you, at least before, I, I tried to construct and I tried to plan. Let's say I, I started out maybe, maybe 10, 15 years ago. I started with five-year plans. And after a while, five years is way too long. You can't really predict five years. Mm -hmm. Then I would start doing one-year plans. Yeah. And then as time goes on, it goes from one year to six months to three to one to yeah. now it's almost daily. Now it's I'm, what am I going to have for dinner tonight plan? What am I going <laughs> to have? What am I doing tomorrow? I mean, you know, uh, now things are just flowing and uh, let's talk about Nepal. Yeah. So, so you get there and you know a friend there. I get you know there, I know friends. And um, get to Pokhara, beautiful place in Nepal. Um, I meet her up, so but at, way up, like in the mountains, like Pokhara. How do you get there. Pokhara itself. Is there an airport or what? Well, you can fly. I flew from Chiang Mai. Or I'm sorry, not Chiang Mai, Bangkok, to Kathmandu, which is um, uh, Nepal's capital. And in Nepal, it's actually half mountains and half like foothills okay. and then um, so flew directly from Kathmandu to Pokhara met her up um, but I think she was she was someone that was supposed to bring me to the place mm -hmm. um, but after that I had to do the exploration um, so met her up a couple of times and after that it, it's kind of like a in in the very base city of Pokhara it's, it's very touristy at least the place I was at and after one to two days I was just like oh, I'm, I'm, yeah. I don't, you know I I, I've seen enough of this all yeah. around the world but um, eventually I saw that there's just amazing treks yeah. I had no idea that uh, the Annapurna circuit that I did is very well known to trekkers mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a two week oh, this, this was amazing this Two week trek around, Two the, week around track. the Himalayas. So basically, the, you, you day one, you just hike. And what's amazing about this trek is that there are guest houses almost everywhere. Yeah. So it's like you just walk, 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 and you see all these beautiful things. And what's, what's amazing about Annapurna Circuit is that the, uh, the environment changes like almost every other day. Like in the very beginning, it was just like, it was kind of like forest like uh -huh. and then you started climbing climbing and then you just see like snow and ice mountains and then you keep going going and it's almost like desert like you're like whoa wow <laughs> it's like but I'm, I'm trying to recollect now kind of 
my experience. Yeah, yeah, you um, gotta let it, let it out. Officially. But it was, it was almost like a quest mm -hmm. because even by day, by day two or three, you know, I was just trekking along, having fun. But what ended up happening was um, my knee kind of uh, caves inwards mm -hmm. because I have a flat foot on my right knee. Yeah. So eventually after constant da, 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 walking uh, about six, seven hours a day, yeah, Jesus. eventually my knee started to feel that, that aching pain. And within my mind, it was just like, ah, I remember that day. It was, there's three different voices going on. Huh. And uh, so when you, when you start to become more and more aware, you, you start to, to become aware that there are different characters being played within you. So I'll describe this one situation so you might understand that there was uh, the fearful character, the one that was worried, right? So this one, it would, it would manifest into becoming something like, oh, fuck. You know, I, mm -hmm. I have another like 10 days mm -hmm. left in, in this trek. You know, if I continue, you know, I might damage severely my knee. Yeah. It, could, it, took, it may take years to, to, um, to help. Yeah? So that was kind of like the worried voice or the worried character. There's another one that was more of the the strong ego. So it was like, you know what? Fuck that shit. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Fuck it. You know, if feel the pain and just keep going. Yeah. You know. So there was like man up. Go man up. Yeah. You know. So th there was that voice that came up, and then I've I've started to develop, for me myself, I, I call it the the wisdom voice, and this one's. For this one, I feel like it's not just a voice, but it's something that you feel. And that day I, I listened to this one. And this one was just like, this is where you're supposed to be. Just keep going. And so from this, I was like, okay, I'm going to not be worried and, and go back. I'm not going to forcefully go ahead but there's something deeper that says, this is my journey right now. Let's go. Hell and I'll continue yeah. that. Uh, so your three voices, you decided to go forward into the trek. Are you by yourself, by the way? Uh, I decided for most of the trip, about 85% of the time I was, I was solo. Just trekking? Yeah. Uh, but is it a map or what? Yeah, you got a, you got a basic map. Um, but I mean, on the trail itself, during busy seasons, you'll just run into people, and yeah. um, if you, it's easy, if you wanted to join people, I mean, you just kind of connect with them and just continue forward. But for me, um, this was kind of uh, a journey into my own mind and my own being. So I wanted kind of that space for me to kind of just be be present and aware. For sure. Yeah. So let's get into that, like the meditation, like um, in these guest houses, are there like monks and stuff all up in there and do you see like temples everywhere and meditating and do you just go by yourself and meditate yeah. or can you go to like meditation retreats? Yeah. Um, in the guest houses itself, I mean, it's, it's mainly just for trekkers, especially on the way. But uh, in Nepal, there are many 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 uh temples they call it gompas um all around um and i'm sh there are certain ones that you can learn meditation you can talk with them uh for me for this particular trip i didn't um go to many of them uh, i decided to i've uh at at this time i felt like i already know enough uh, for me to to continue on my journey up to a certain point um, so 
I trekked and uh, it was supposed to only be about two weeks, but there was a, um, you know, I, I, I decided I didn't want to rush this circuit. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I kind of just wanted to enjoy and, and be and wherever I felt like I wanted to be. If I want to stay here for a certain time longer, I would do that. And about towards the end of it, there's a place called Mutinath, which I found to be quite a special place. Cool. For me, it was, it was uh, quite special. And I, so I decided to stay there for quite some time. Mm. Um, What's the name of the place again? Uh, for those that will find it, will find it. Okay. Secret, guys. <laughs> what? No, not really secret. It's just uh, I, I don't want to name certain places because everybody has their own journey. Mm -hmm. Everybody has their own places to go. For me particularly, I felt like that was the place I was supposed to be at that time. So there, there's, mm, there's kind of this uh, uh, herd mentality where it's like, when someone hears about a, like a special place, um, they tend to want to go there and, and seek the same thing. But everybody has their yeah. own route to take. Yeah, it's gonna know? come to you. Exactly. Um, so for me, this particular place, I stayed for quite some time. And, you know, I, I ended up um, staying in my room most of the time and meditating for about six to eight hours. Every day? And you every day. there for like how long, like a week or what? Uh, up there in that particular place, it was about a month. In that um, place, a month in that place. So for a month you're meditating every day, six to eight hours? Range, ranges. About, about there? Yeah. Um, whoa, was there like a, a, a monk up there like helping you or like what was that? Wow, what was that like? I mean, I, I've done similar things before, so th it, it's, it's intense, but because I've done, let's say, like a 21-day Vipassana here in Thailand, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's similar, you know, and, you know, it, it's, it's funny because it, it seemed like a very long time, but if you, th if you really just mm -hmm. become more aware in life, you will understand that there is this outer world, yes? Uh, can touch, can touch, can feel, can see everything, yeah? But when your eyes are closed, here's a whole different experience. You know, and then you start to really understand the inner world, the, the, who you really are, yeah? A lot of people actually don't want to do this because, uh, especially in the very beginning, not just the beginning, but quite some time, you're usually dealing with your shit. You're usually dealing with all the, the pains and the da. So all most day, people would day. most people would rather just kind of stay out here and go about here. Yeah, it's another level, man. It's another world. But... When you really just close your eyes and you just breathe and, and you just go in, you start to explore all the different parts of you, breathing deeply and then you start to see, oh, whoa, what is this? Why can't I, why do I feel like when I breathe I'm getting stuck here? And then you keep breathing and keep breathing you relax and, and I mean, there's many, to, I'm not going to get into techniques right now, but when you start to explore, then you start to unravel all the, the, the fears, the worries, the, because in the end, the fears and the worries, they're, they're actually tangible within yourself. Mm. You can feel stress. Oh, fuck. Uh, do, you, do you feel that lockup? Uh, yeah? Mm. You can feel the worry in the face, and uh, it's like, uh. and all of these um, uh, 
I don't want to label it negative or whatever, but let's, mm -hmm. let's make it easy. All of these negative emotions are very constricting. Mm -hmm. They start to lock your body up. They, and for me, what I found is they're not natural. Totally created. When, when, when you're a natural being, you're just flowing. Your, your energy is just moving. But then these things, these anger, these uh, when you're too much in your head, da, 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 then everything starts to lock up. It's very fascinating because if you watch animals, it, they're they're very fluid in the way that they move. Somehow only only humans get like stiff, you know. Mm, like I'm gonna get up. And <laughs> and for me, I'm I'm starting to find out that it's it's. The, the, it's uh, repeated patterns over and over that was created that you're supposed to walk a certain way. Yeah, like that you were saying at dinner, yeah. You know, well, I mean, <laughs> the stick maybe I, I, yeah, maybe I told you. Yeah. Yeah, I did tell you. So basically, one of the, the things um, that I experimented with on my trek was while I was walking, I was like, uh, why do I walk this certain way? Mm -hmm. Is it because I'm trying to walk proper. Huh. My mind has created this specific way of walking to walk properly. Yeah? And then, so I decided to kind of loosen those boundaries. Instead of walking properly, I want to get to this destination, but what if I just... Um, uh, take out the boundaries of property and mm -hmm. just walk and see what happens. Mm -hmm. And at that time, <laughs> you know, I was walking, walking, and then all of a sudden my body was kind of just moving how it wants down the road. <laughs> 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 da, 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 da. She was flibbity flowity. And, and what I found was that when I let go of that constriction of walking properly, at I mean, at that specific time of walking, it looked very fucking awkward. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I have, there, there are still blockages within my body. And then so as I was walking, I found that it was actually starting to focus, not really focus, but starting to, those blockage areas were really revealing itself. We're really mm, showing. Like the stiffness in your body. The stiffness in the body. The, all the blocks, yeah. Yeah, then you can start to become, holy shit, all of this is here. But as I just allowed it to be without judgment and just walk, it was actually healing those areas. Oh, shit. Because our bodies have a natural healing mechanism. Yeah, natural. They heal themselves. Exactly. They heal themselves. We're self-healing machines, that, and that's the miracle. The thing that stops it is up here, mm, because we want to control everything. When you start to control, then it's very da da da. But as you kind of just start to relax and let go, then your body already knows how to move, how it wants to, how it's supposed to. And that's kind of like the overall philosophy like of Buddhism and or meditation whatever you want to call it is just letting go and just be letting go of all like, perceived notions like there is nothing like they say in Buddhism there is just being you know like we are here just to I always think and try to remind myself of this is we are here just for no particular reason just to experience like you could there's philosophies that you know what's the meaning of life why are we here why is there existence just to experience it we are here because this is one possibility of an infinite amount of possibilities and we're here as the universe itself just experiencing itself but the whole uh, meditation thing of just being so how deep did you get? Can you provide a little insight into what it's like to be in that deep meditative state? I've actually done it once in my life. I can't remember when, but all I remember is 
I felt like I was on shrooms. <laughs> like it released, <laughs> you know, because it released like that natural yeah. uh, tons of serotonin or whatever. So I was like, oh my God, it's real. You can get high without drugs. Like it's, it's natural within us. And so ever since then, I kind of understood like, yeah, these, these monks, like these real deep guys, like what they're doing is they're just tripping on shrooms all the time. But naturally, you know, um, you know, so to speak, deep in these states, you know, achieving ecstasy without drugs, just like connecting with the universe as, as a whole, because that's what you experience when you take like psych psychedelics is the c connection to the whole world and the universe even sometimes. So did you like experience any of that? How, did, how deep did you go and like what did you learn? <clears throat> I mean, I don't, I don't even know how you quantify it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like how, like how? Well, I got to level six point seven, but then <laughs> that was my high score. But then, uh, like, you know, it's it's Ricky it's, had a high score of seven thirty two, but I couldn't get yeah. quite there. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's just a it's just a journey, and and what I found is I I have been I've been told the life secret gateway to I've been told it on pretty much my whole life by many different people by by my martial arts instructors by my parents by by my meditation people all it's the principle is very easy and and it's relax mm -hmm. But there, that specific, I mean, relax is a word, but to relax this action, there's so many different layers to it. Yeah, like you so saying. right now, let's see, I can relax here. Uh, okay, that was relax. And then now I feel there's still tension here, relax. So as you go more and more within, you'll, you'll start to feel the more and more subtle restrictions within yourself. And as you're able to let those go, then you're starting to be able to free yourself. I mean, my goal now is, is ultimate freedom. And I mean, see now there's the paradox again because it's a goal. Because if you're if you're striving for something, you're you're attaching yourself to it. This attachment is a specific constriction. Even that needs to be let go. Mm -hmm. And life, life is funny. Life, man. life is the journey. <laughs> there doesn't necessarily need to be a goal. We're just here experiencing experience, experiencing the world, the universe for. 90 80 100 years and uh yeah there's there's levels to this ish of relaxation like i'm relaxed now but there's there's levels Meek Mill, mm. for sure and i mean i think this is what all the the deep deep meditation and you know why they seclude themselves so that they can really just start to fine tune and really start to feel and be aware of all these subtle levels of living um, so while I was up there and just spending a lot of time by myself I, I got to start to experience more and more of that subtleness you know and needless to say you got pretty relaxed up there <laughs> <laughs> you got pretty probably more relaxed than so to speak than we've all ever been and, f and for me what what does it mean to be relax why why do I want to be relaxed it's hard to explain that's why but <laughs> I mean get it and and ultimately as as I relax more and more I I find that my interactions within this outside world here just becomes much more playful and fun. Mm -hmm. 
You know? Yeah, because that tree, I'm pretty sure, is pretty relaxed. It's just blowing in <laughs> the just wind. Chilling, you know, it's not you know? stressed out. You know, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I don't need to force anything to happen anymore. Things just happen. You know, I even even before this podcast, I was like, okay, I think it's it's time for me to slowly start to get out there more now. It's it's time for me to to start to share the things that I've experienced. Mm-hmm. Shortly after here, it's like... Yeah, that was because that was dope because we met at the dinner. Um, there's a clip of that in the last vlog. But, and then, so that night when we all went out with the, the Nomad fam in Chiang Mai, like he, he starts to mention, yeah, I'm, I'm like, what's next, man? He's like, yeah, blogging, writing, starting to share the experience. And I was like, well, perfect. You just got back. A podcast would be perfect just to to get it going and just to let ideas uh, flow out there and then you can take uh, snippets from this and then start writing and take that da, 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 yeah. Da. so yeah things are just happening in my life now it's 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 eventually this is what um, in Lao Tzu in the Tao Te Ching it says that pretty much life becomes effortless effort it's a paradox, but to me nowadays, it's making sense. Gotcha. I'm putting effort here, but this is effortless. I'm not. I'm not forcing this. I'm not trying. It's just everything is just happening. Mm-hmm. It's not stressful effort. It's not forceful or there's. Yeah, it doesn't have to be complicated. As I refine more and more, I mean, even for myself, I I still have some refining to do, some some loosening up, some relaxation. But as as the time comes. And more and more of this is beginning to unravel itself. Then everything is just happening. I don't have to think about what to say. It just comes. Mm. That's amazing. This is life. To know. (laughs) So that's a good segue into kind of like what's next what's coming and I wanted to mention that was Mm. cool that you mentioned you're on the uh, mission or whatever to ultimate freedom because Mm. we started on one level of freedom right which is freeing yourself from the rat race guys and most of my videos are about that how to make your own independent income right my goal my first goal for freedom was just to free myself from the rat race you know he was an entrepreneur and an explorer from a very young age he got there you know, and then he came to Chiang Mai and he was traveling around. That's one another level of freedom, like location freedom. Mm. And then now he's, you know, freedom from the the everyday stresses of the world. And then freedom from these tensions in your body. And then freedom from who knows the next level. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ultimate freedom. As they say, you know, enlightenment. Why not? You only live once. Why not try to reach, you know, enlightenment? And, you know, what is that? I just kind of think of it as being the ultimate version of yourself. Like everyone says, be the best version of yourself. Understand the world to the best of your ability before you die. Be the best version of yourself before you die and experience the world to the fullest. That's what I think about enlightenment. So, just so people know, Let's talk about your um, what happened with your Amazon thing because this guy's mm. a beast. Like, I always see his posts on Facebook. He he, before the Nepal thing, he did this big post on Facebook. Like, I'm gonna launch ten products in a year, and I'm gonna do a seven figure Amazon business. And you were crushing it with Amazon. Mm. Um, you're still selling some products. Yeah, still running. So, anyways, he makes money on Amazon, guys. You already know about that from mm. me. Um, kind of what's next in um, what's next from your business world is there, is there like a blog you're starting or kind of like where are you going next where are you flowing or he probably doesn't even know actually he's <laughs> just going to flow with the universe wherever it takes him we'll see yeah I'm, I'm, I'm not certain just yet um, it could possibly be a blog in the making um, I mean right now I, I'm still 
I, my, my main focus is still refining myself mm -hmm. because I know that as, as I go deeper and deeper and, and I let go of all the different fears and all the different tensions and blockages, then my message will become more and more clear. As I do that, then things will just happen, you know. Um, right now, um, like I said, I, I feel like I'll, I'll slowly put myself out there at the moment as things come. But, you know, I'm, I'm just enjoying the journey right now. I, I have no rush, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. It's all about the journey. This view is uh, incredible right now, though. <laughs> yeah, we are is... up in Doi Sutep, a.k.a. Sutep Mountain. And we got <sighs> these Buddhist statues here. Um, before we go, is like one, one or a couple quick, like, actionable things that people can do that are watching like do you have like a morning ritual hack that like a beginner could do that like what's one small thing that people could do that would Here, here's one that? thing mm. if you haven't already meditate is such a broad term everybody has different um, uh, interpretations of yeah. it but basically you can in the morning time or before you go to sleep, sit or lay down, just be comfortable and just breathe. Breathe and just observe what happens. Oh, my breath is short. Oh, wow, I never noticed that. See if you can elongate your breath, not forcefully, but just breathe naturally and see just how long that natural breath can go and also observe how your mind is working what what type of thoughts is coming up oh, I gotta go do this oh fuck what is this feeling God. be aware of that but don't attach yourself to it just know that it's there like wow mm -hmm. that's coming up and then I mean that's that's a basic practice that people can start off with yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I've I've seen that when I started my Buddhist journey on YouTube, learning about meditation, it's just learning to, like even the monks, like thoughts come in, like distraction and worryful thoughts come in, but it's all about just seeing it and then being like, oh, that's funny. And then letting it go, not attaching, not letting it come down here, just it comes in. Oh, I'm worrying about that. That's funny. I should maybe try not to worry about that so much. <laughs> just let it go out that way. When you, t um, uh, listen, watching the YouTube videos on uh, Eckhart Tolle and like the people that are just like, just be, <laughs> you know, it's like, just, just be those people. Like, that I, stuff kind of changed my life. You know? I, I remember watching those years and years ago and yeah. I was like, what the fuck are these people talking about? Just be. Yeah. And then him and let's say like Thich Nhat Hanh, I remember reading his book a long time ago and, and in there he was like, when you're washing the dish, wash the dish <laughs> when you're sweeping the floor sweep the floor i was like why the fuck would anyone want to live like that Are they mad? <laughs> yeah. and then now slowly slowly as i'm going going in this journey i'm like oh that's what they're saying mm. wow there is no Powerful. other possible moment than this moment mm. like it's what they're saying like they're Right now, are there any problems? Like in this present moment, no, no future, no past. Are there any problems? And it's the realization that, oh, yeah, no, there's no problems right now. <laughs> and so, yeah, that's a little life hack. Watch, watch those videos too. One other thing that you were mentioning, like mm -hmm. to uh, when thoughts come, just let it go. Mm -hmm. At least for me, what I found is sometimes there are thoughts or emotions that are very stubborn. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they don't fucking want to go. Yeah. They want to kind of linger around. Let, let it linger. Let it do its thing. But eventually, one day, 
it'll pass. One moment, one minute, one hour, one day, whatever, it'll go. Even if it's painful. What I found is all thoughts and all emotions want respect and attention. And if you can give these thoughts and emotions full focus, Mm -hmm. saying, I'm here, I'm with you. And eventually it's like, especially if it's a heavy one, then it's like, okay, thank you. I've learned there, there's a Hawaiian um, healing. It's called Hoapapono. And there's four phrases, four intentions that are some of the most powerful intentions in the whole universe. And it's up to you to see how deep you want to go with these. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. Ooh. Deep. These, these are just words that are coming out. But the intention behind it, if you can get deeper and deeper with these mm. ones, healing just happens mm. it's a it, it comes from a deep rooted emotion feeling vibration mm. well if that wasn't some knowledge bombs for you i don't know what was steven the young buddha i'm calling you young buddha yeah. it's good talk with you man yeah man that was an awesome talk hope you guys uh enjoyed it too and i'm leaving chiang mai like next week so i will see you mm. when i see you yeah for sure. All right. We'll definitely see each other around the world somewhere. Namaste. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Peace. Oh, yeah. Sending out vibes to the universe. Yeah.